Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's talk about apps for the App Store versus enterprise apps. Okay, so last week I did episode 399, which is about whether or not you should work on a successful project even if you're not interested in it, right? And in that video I talked about how a lot of our client work lately is construction companies, so we're doing a lot of construction apps lately, which is kind of a, a strange niche to be in, but still kind of cool, right? And there was a really good comment on that video from Shaw Omroy, and it was a long comment, but at the end he's, he asked this question. He said, question, what would a construction app include, features, etc., or do you find they just want to have the novelty of having an app? And is it a native app? See, this is a really good question, and it, it goes to the whole thing about app development, what people expect from an application. So I answered that in the, in the comments there, but a lot of the times when I go to companies and I say, hey, we can do an app for you, they're thinking the same thing. They're thinking the novelty aspect, and maybe their marketing person might be a little bit interested, but mostly they're not. They're like, no, not, not really, right? But I'm, but most of the time, I'm not thinking about that at all. So there's two different types of apps you can do. You could do the, the App Store app. So maybe we'll make you a little game or something like that or something that they're, something for all of their customers. Or we could do an enterprise app, something for their users. And most of the time when I talk about our client applications, like when we do client apps for companies, we're not doing them for the App Store. I mean, sometimes, but most of the time we're doing them for the enterprise. So it's something they use internally you know, to help them with their processes, which I find much more fun to do because with the app store you know they're worried about whether or not people are going to download it all that kind of stuff the same kind of stuff we do as app developers but when you do something for an internal company then it's you know it helps their company it helps the flow of everything and a lot of times you're dealing with enterprise apis and everything like that so to give you an example let's say and i'm not going to give it a specific example because of ndas and all this stuff but let's say a company has um, they have a warehouse and they're trying to take inventory of everything in their warehouse and maybe they have barcodes on everything and they have a, a database of barcodes. Well, they should be able to use their phone and just go around and, and scan those, those things and maybe take a picture of it. You know, they got GPS coordinates. So if we talk about the phone, you have all these things on it, right? Things that maybe you could do with a website, maybe, but you, you just have all this power at your fingertips and people are carrying around uh, voluntarily, they have the supercomputer in their pocket, why not release an app to their employees so they can use it to make their jobs easier? And, and because we're software developers, we can look at, and because it's bespoke, we could look at like, what is your API here? Does it need to interface with SharePoint or Salesforce or whatever backend system over here? Or do you have this proprietary thing over here where we have to write this REST API for? We could do all that kind of stuff, right? So that's that's much more fun because you have a limited amount of users, but it'll probably be a lot more useful for them. And I, and, and I talk about this before, I've talked, I said this over and over again, I think the apps are gonna go with the way the web did. Like when the web, the dot-com boom in the like 2000s, early 2000s, everyone was going, I'm gonna become a dot-net millionaire, right? And then it became a tool, the web became a tool. Like in investment banks, I was working on internal enterprise systems. And this is where apps are going, I feel. Like we're, we're working on a lot of enterprise apps. So. Let's talk about the differences between an enterprise app and a and an app store app. So on the Android side, like when you're actually building them and distributing them, because most of the time when you're building them, pretty much the same thing. But when you distribute them, it becomes a bit more difficult. Not so much on the Android side, because the Android side is, I, I swear, we just send them an APK, right? Their IT guys know what to do in an APK. They'll say, we'll put it on a shared directory. We'll have a web page they could go download it on, whatever. They can do whatever they want. They can distribute it. It's harder when you come to iOS. So, so when we talk about the different ways, there's three different ways that I know of that you can release an, an iOS app to, to an, an iPhone, right? The first one would be, through the app store so like i've had clients where they came to us and said we don't really want to give this out to the whole world and i'm saying we'll put a password on it i mean the, the likelihood is nobody's going to go download it without you sending them a link anyway we won't do any marketing on it and everything and sometimes that that's enough but it's still kind of like <laughs> most of the time their security people are like no, i don't know if i like that the second way which is i find much easier than any of the others is the volume purchasing program or the VPP. So that, if you release an app on iOS, you can see when you go to the pricing and distribution, there's a B2B apps section down there and you can select that. And basically what they do, so your client will set up a volume purchasing program with Apple and then they will add all their users to it. 
right and when you release the app you say I only want this company to see it or I only want these users to see it it doesn't have to be just one company you can have multiple but uh, you can either sell it to them or you can make it free on the App Store and then sell it through an invoice which is normally what we do right and that the, the nice thing about that is if there's ever an update that needs to be done or a bug or anything like that you could just do it you could just do it and release it it's on your app store but only they can see it and it's just a much easier process and the third way is through the enterprise distribution program which is which is a way for them to actually release the apps without going through iTunes, without having to go through the app stores and anything like that. They can just release it through a shared drive or they can have a web page and you just go download a link and everything like that. Now, when we've done this for clients, it has not been so easy because we have to get access to their developer account. We have to get access to their to their different accounts, download the certificate. Sometimes because they only have two certificates per account, sometimes you have to kick someone else off, or you have to share a certificate with someone else. And we and it's been round and round. And then once a year, that certificate expires, and then the app just dies, and you have to rebuild it again. So that's a little bit uh, different. So. For those of you guys who are looking to work with clients and you're looking to work with companies, think about the enterprise applications. Because if you try to market it as, hey, we can make it this nice little game, which is, by the way, that is the hardest thing to get people to get over, right? When I say we're gonna do an app, they think I'm talking games. They think I'm talking about some cute little thing that they could do and maybe they can have like a, a dancing bear that promotes their company and they're thinking, I'm not really interested in that. And I said, that's not what I'm talking about at all. We're talking about enterprise applications that will help improve the flow of your business you put the tools in the hands of, of your users you, you, know, you should have to give them a phone to use they should be able to use whichever phone they want to and you should be able to have that app on, on all of them and the other question there was is it native and no most of the time we make it through hybrid because in that way we could distribute it to both of them and it's for all their users but I thought it was such a good question because there is such a the first perception of the apps and app developers is that we make tiny little teensy little things which are cute and that's not always the case we could work on some big systems so anyway let me know what you guys think if that's useful at all but anyway that's it for today i will talk to you guys again tomorrow